November 12th, 1992. A primetime undercover investigation. Black Muslims are charging a fortune for their miracle cure for AIDS. They've even convinced the U.S. government to spend millions testing it. Tonight, Chief Correspondent Chris Wallace exposes the truth and confronts a doctor accused of bilking money from desperate patients. We talk to scientists, people in the black community. And you know what they say your objective is? Ripping off your own people. If that's what their opinion is, they can go to hell. From ABC News, with anchors Diane Sawyer in New York, Sam Donaldson in Washington, Chief Correspondent Chris Wallace, Judd Rose, Jay Shadler, Sylvia Chase, John Quinones, and Nancy Collins. This is Prime Time. Prime Time. From New York, Diane Sawyer. Good evening and welcome to Prime Time. The Nation of Islam, the Black Muslims. They are a powerful force in many African-American communities in this country, proclaiming their integrity and commitment to defend black Americans, especially against what they see as exploitation by whites. And some of them say that exploitation extends to AIDS. A recent poll showed that nearly 30% of black Americans said they thought the AIDS virus may have been deliberately created in a laboratory to infect black people. A fear that may have created an opportunity for Dr. Abdul Ali Muhammad, a powerful and charismatic black Muslim leader. Chief Correspondent Chris Wallace decided to investigate after hearing that Muhammad insists he has the key to saving thousands, maybe millions of lives. If only people would listen to his message and heed his warning. The attitude of the American government towards this epidemic is disgusting. There's compelling evidence on the public record to suggest that maybe HIV is a biological weapon. Somebody is out to kill you. It is one of the darkest fears of black America, that the AIDS virus is a man-made biological weapon designed to wipe out the black race. This man, Dr. Abdul Alim Muhammad, is spreading that message and offering a treatment developed in Africa he says can beat AIDS. It's almost like a miracle that it has the ability to reverse the signs and symptoms of AIDS in almost every case. I'm standing on a firm foundation. Muhammad is the health minister of the Nation of Islam, the black Muslim sect headed by Louis Farrakhan. Last month, more than 50,000 people gathered at the Nation of Islam's national conference in Atlanta and heard Muhammad preach about black separatism and his new black drug. We have been fighting the war on AIDS, and I want you to know we're winning the war on AIDS. Muhammad first gained notice in 1988 when he brought black Muslims into this Washington, D.C. housing project to root out drug dealers. We didn't kill them. We didn't hurt them. But we took their weapons and spanked them. Then last year, he turned a clinic he runs in the project into an AIDS center where he started treating patients with an unapproved drug called oral interferon, brand name Immunex. He says the results have been astonishing. HIV should no longer be considered to be a fatal illness. It should be considered something that is treatable. You're saying that an AIDS patient who goes on Immunex, yes. on oral interferon, won't die? More than 90% of cases. It sounds too good to be true. And according to the nation's top scientists, it is. Dr. Daniel Hoth reviews new AIDS drugs for the National Institutes of Health. We couldn't find any conclusive evidence that oral interferon was benefiting patients. In any way? In any way. But Dr. Muhammad has ignored NIH. Over the past year, he's organized 10 AIDS clinics around the country, and they are not typical treatment centers. None of the doctors is trained to deal with infectious diseases like HIV. And all of the clinics sell Immunex as the primary treatment, even though top scientists say there's no evidence. The black Muslim miracle cure does anything. Primetime sent AIDS patients in undercover to some of Muhammad's clinics. More than 700 people with the AIDS virus, most of them poor, have been put on Immunex. And when they ask why the drug hasn't been approved, they're told there's been a deliberate whiteout by the media and government. White people are not going to tell you how to save yourself. So do not ask me, please, why the white people are not bringing ineffective therapies. 
Do you really believe that the white scientists in this country at NIH would suppress a drug that could conceivably be a cure for AIDS because well, of some black ties? I think so. I think that's absolutely what they're doing. And Why? It, 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 because this is America, isn't it? Is, is, isn't this America? I have AIDS. I have taken oral interferon. I am not cured. Bill Thompson is one of hundreds of AIDS patients who have tried and stopped using oral interferon. He is so outraged by the way Muhammad is pushing the drug to blacks, he helped us in our undercover investigation. My black community does not own AIDS. The white community does not own AIDS. This is a worldwide disease that is affecting all of us, and we cannot afford to separate ourselves from each other. The effectiveness of Muhammad's treatment is not the only issue. So too is the price he charges. In our undercover visits, we found every patient must sign up for a six-month program of doctor's visits, lab tests, and Immunex that costs almost $2,500. They're not told the drug is available at a fraction of the cost at independent AIDS buyers clubs. And even though most of Muhammad's patients are poor, those who can't pay are routinely turned away. That is a lot of money for some people. Is, is there some kind of arrangement or, or anything? Or? At the moment, we do not have that because mm -hmm. the doctor is trying to work on getting the financing, the, um, the price down. Their wallets are being emptied at the same time that their, mo their darkest racial fears are being exploited. Martin Delaney, who runs a hotline for the latest news on AIDS drugs and is on an NIH advisory panel, says what Muhammad is doing is ugly. Mr. Delaney, you must realize that as a white man, saying this, you are immediately suspect. No, I understand that, but here you're taking uh, a relatively discredited drug with an exaggerated price and selling it to the poorest people affected by AIDS and asking them to pay for it, not out of insurance, but out of their own pockets. Believe me, if a white guy were doing that to the black community, I'd be at the front of the line trying to shoot that person. Interferon has had a controversial history. It's been used for years, injected in very high doses, to fight leukemia and hepatitis. Then four years ago, a Texas veterinarian started using tiny doses given orally to treat animal viruses. Researchers in Kenya started experimenting on people, and in 1990 announced startling results in fighting the AIDS virus. They said almost all patients showed a sharp rise in disease-fighting T cells, indicating a strengthening of their immune system. More astonishing, they claim 20% converted from HIV positive to negative, the only time anyone's been cured of AIDS. News of this miracle cure rocked the medical community. Hundreds of AIDS patients made the long trip to Africa to try the new drug. One man named Stephen went on CNN hiding his identity to spread the good news. I haven't felt this good safely, I can safely say in two years. My energy level is incredible. Two years ago, it seemed to be working. Recently, we caught up with Stephen to find out how he is doing now. The last that people heard of you, you were in Africa mm -hmm. on oral interferon and feeling terrific. I got home and I had all the blood work done again and nothing had changed. Back to right where I was before I went. What was the experience of the other people? They're all dead. They've all died. Interest in oral interferon died down until last year when Dr. Muhammad reignited the controversy, making his own trip to Kenya. Although he has no training to treat AIDS patients, he says he came back with a mission, to push the drug under the name Immunex in the black community. I realized that coming from Africa, uh, that people would just dismiss it as some kind of African jungle mumbo jumbo. Muhammad and his network of clinics were soon selling Immunex to hundreds of patients. Why don't you have a seat here? Sure. He arranged for us to meet just Dale Corbett, here. a longtime AIDS survivor who's been on the drug for almost a year. I strongly, strongly believe if it wasn't for the MNX, I would be dead. Corbett told us he is now free from AIDS and showed us his lab report as proof. The T-cell count is the most widely accepted marker for the disease. Around 1,200 is normal. You are considered to have full-blown AIDS when T-cells drop below 200. Corbett was delighted that his count had risen from zero to four. So you think this is an indication that the drug works, that you have four T-cells? Yeah, after I didn't have any at all. I mean, you know, look at next month, I may have 15, and next month I have may 30. See, it doubles. The medicine makes it doubles. But experts say minor fluctuations in T-cell count mean nothing. 
The only drugs that have shown any sustained impact and prolong people's lives are antiviral drugs like AZT. But in our undercover trips to Nation of Islam clinics, we found patients were told to get off AZT and other approved drugs and to get on the miracle cure. Well, did you know that we were telling people not to take AZT? No, I didn't know. Why? Why not to take AZT? Because it's poor? There's no scientific basis for giving a patient that advice. Concerned about the growing controversy, scientists at NIH finally stepped in last April, reviewing 13 studies of oral interferon from around the world. They found the Kenyan study scientifically flawed and came to this conclusion on the drug's effectiveness. So far, there's no evidence from well-designed, well-controlled trials to show that patients receive any kind of benefit. You would think the strong statement from NIH would have ended this controversy. But Dr. Muhammad only stepped up his campaign and gained important allies in the black community. The mayor of Washington praised his work on AIDS. And the city's health commissioner agreed with Muhammad that Immunex was being dismissed because of its ties to Africa. Even the National Medical Association of Black Doctors passed a resolution stating Immunex has been shown to be a potentially effective therapy and called on NIH to conduct one more study of the drug. But no black leader raised any concerns about charges that Muhammad is profiteering. As we said, you can buy oral interferon far more cheaply at AIDS buyers clubs around the country than from Muhammad. Here in Washington, a club sells 30 tablets of Immulin for $55. But the black Muslims sell their brand, Immunex, for $250. That's a 500% markup. Doctor, we've talked to a number of people, scientists, people in the black community, and you know what they say your objective is? Ripping off your own people. Well, they're entitled to their opinion. If that's what their opinion is, they can go to hell. Doctor, why are you charging five times as much for exactly the same drug? Well, what you're showing there, Imulin, is not exactly the same thing. I think I probably use the term counterfeit. I think that's what it is. It doesn't work. Muhammad has sent a letter to his clinics dismissing the rival brand, Imulin, as phony, not even worth one dollar. But in fact, both brands are made by the same company, and Encourage, whose president, Roger Wyatt, says they are the same drug sold in different markets. Yeah, there's no difference in Immunex and Immulin. That's two trade names uh, for the same product. Doctor, we talked to Encourage, and they told us the only difference is the well, packaging, if, is the if, name. If, if that's so, I'm not aware of it, and I, and I do see a distinct difference in clinical effect. Just to make sure, we got some Immunex and some Immulin, marked the pills so only we knew which was which, and sent them off to this independent lab to run a blind test. They tested them. You know what the results were? No, I don't. No. They're identical. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't really make sense. Why? I'm, I'm just saying that based on my clinical experience with both medications, they are not the same. Uh, these statements notwithstanding. That, that's, all, that's all that I, I, I can say at this point. And yet, despite all the evidence that the Nation of Islam is profiteering, despite all the studies that show the drug doesn't work, Muhammad is winning the public relations battle over oral interferon. Two weeks ago, NIH rejected the advice of its own AIDS panel and announced it will conduct one more study of the drug. There, celebrating the announcement, was Dr. Muhammad. That another giant step is going to be taken. Are you caving in to pressure from the black community? We don't think so. You say that what Dr. Muhammad is telling his patients has no basis in science, may potentially jeopardize his patients. Why are you letting him in the door? That doesn't mean we're going to... That, that, all that means is that we're willing to listen and, and find out what claims are being made. But NIH will do more than listen. The new test will cost taxpayers millions of dollars. AIDS activists are outraged. There's any number of important AIDS drugs that can't be tested right now because the money isn't there. Should this one be tested again to address the political problems, it will ultimately delay the bringing of effective therapy to people in the black community. While NIH studies a drug it is already discredited, Muhammad is charging ahead, opening more clinics 
selling more Immunex and planning to make and distribute the drug himself. If our people need medicine, we have to produce the medicine because we can't trust them anymore. And now just a footnote. We want to point out that the drug Immunex has no connection to the biotechnology company Immunex Corporation, which is based in Seattle.